Good afternoon and thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Shona O'Donnell and I'm the Head of Strategic Events at Veta Collective, one of the largest sports betting affiliates and previously responsible for some of the largest events in the online gaming industry. We are today going to be talking about skill gaming and the need for or against regulation and I'm delighted to be joined by Philip Runyon who is joining us from the other side of the globe today. Um, Philip is a serial entrepreneur and describes himself as a chief executive risk taker in all aspects of life, I believe, not just in business. Perhaps we'll talk about that later. Um, and he does that at uh, Whole Gaming. He's currently testing the waters with lots of esports and blockchain technologies to create a more engaging and transparent experience. Philip, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Hi, Shona. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Okay, so I think what we're going to talk about today largely is about skill gaming. And I think everyone's really clear on the difference between games of skill and games of chance and where that falls in terms of regulation. Whole Game have launched the first skill-based uh, blackjack game, and I understand that that's going pretty well for you. Can you tell us a bit about it to give us some context for the conversation around regulation? Sure. So uh, Blackjack Fire, as you mentioned, uh, is our first uh, foray into skill-based uh, casino games. Uh, really, it functioned as a litmus test for a uh, market appetite. You know, what happens when you convert a universally loved casino game uh, like Blackjack uh, that has failed repeatedly in free-to-play markets? Uh, and we make it truly skill-based for cash prizes um, in pre-regulated markets. I just want to be clear, we are talking pre-regulation. We don't use the term unregulated or gray markets anymore. Uh, these are real markets with amazing opportunity uh, and potential on the horizon. So the big questions that we really had here um, were things like, you know, would this even make it into an app store? You know, could we add acquiring services uh, and other AML, KYC, geocompliance partners? Could we even advertise the app? You know, what, what was Facebook going to say when we said, hey, we would like to buy ads on here? Um, you know, would the customer understand the game? Would they play? Could we retain them? You know, most importantly, could we get them to put up a couple bucks, right, to be able to play? Um, and I can confidently say yes uh, to about 98% of that. Um, our test has gone quite well. Uh, we exceeded um, most of our KPIs um, that we didn't expect to see until uh, year three. That's pretty exciting and some really amazing numbers. And I think what's really interesting is that you're talking about pre-regulated markets, as you say, like not gray markets, not unregulated because I think we're all very realistic, I would expect, so that, that we know that regulation certainly seems to be a given eventuality in most markets that involve cash and consumers. Now, what I think is really interesting has been your approach to this. Um, you know, you talked about KYC, you talk about AML, and for a lot of people, they would think that regulation is, is a real hurdle um, another hoop to jump through, something that that adds to the process of getting your game to market. And they might question why in a situation where, as you say, it's pre-regulation, you've added in a lot of the things that would be expected of a pure gambling game um, where there hasn't necessarily been a requirement. So it's interesting. I'd love to just see, like, how do you see regulation like a lot of people would say you know the biggest argument for regulation in gambling is consumer protection so how do you see the need to bring in these additional requirements that are you know they're not small they're not inexpensive why have you taken that approach and why do you think regulation is important sure so uh, i i believe that regulation uh, is and isn't important. I mean, it, it absolutely is. Don't don't get me wrong here. Um, I feel that putting a true, and I do mean a truly skill-based game on the same pedestal as um, a skill gambling game, where a lot of times you intertwine this game of chance first, um, you know, and then and then you have to 
uh, play, uh, you know, uh, uh, if you lose, right, you then have to play some sort of a uh, game of skill, right? You have to play Simon Says for 18 minutes just to be able to get your money back um, or to have some sort of a multiplier. Um, you know, I just, I, I really feel that's madness. Um, I do 100% believe in regulation uh, being needed to provide safety rails for consumers. Um, many games allow you uh, to put in just like your date of birth, as an example, or a credit card. And magically, that's you, and that is your age. Um, other games only use things like IP lookup, you know, as opposed to a, a GPS, you know, as if that couldn't be spoofed to say that you're in a legal state or a country. Um, you know, I really do believe that regulation is important to give companies like Hold Gaming uh, a fighting chance. You know, it took us over a year to get an acquiring service on board. Um, and since then, we've had issues with finding additional partners, uh, you know, to create a, a waterfall, right? When one partner goes, well, we're not quite sure what you are anymore, um, you know, that, that becomes difficult for companies like ours. And it's really unfortunate. Um, a lot of services, again, getting back to acquiring services, being able to accept credit, debit cards, things of that nature, um, they're willing to take If you want to pony up $5,000 a month, you know, in minimal transactional processing, no problem. But companies like that, uh, acquiring services, um, as well as the cost of, you know, being regulated similarly to um, real games of chance and skill gambling puts, you know, small, scrappy startups, I hate that term, but small, scrappy startups like ours at a real disadvantage because we don't have millions of dollars in the bank. We can't buy our way into a lot of those things. We have to be uh, better than the others because we have to, you know, we can't buy our way in, right? We just have to do it through, you know, real due diligence. Yeah, and do you think that part of the, the difficulty in finding partners in a pre-regulated market, especially with what you're doing that's, you know, it's, it's very innovative, it's quite new to market. Do you think the part of the challenge is, is without regulation is there's no clear box to put you in? Like, because you're doing something new, the partners don't really know how to deal with you. And because they don't have those, uh, whether you believe regulation is a good or a bad thing, they don't have those guidelines to fall back on. So do you think in some ways that, that regulation might make it easier for you to find those partnerships because people would, rightly or wrongly be able to put you in a box and understand exactly what you do and how you do and what they're how they're allowed to work with you oh one thousand percent um by having clear again clear safety rails on there for consumers that's really what regulation is about right it's it's about protecting uh consumers uh from fraudulent operators bad suppliers um and of course you know addiction right and so i i 100 percent one thousand percent agree that regulation would make uh, a lot of our lives uh, easier. So I think that's interesting because as you say, you know, you're like a chief risk taker and, and you do take risks on things. And I think certainly before we spoke initially, I would have thought that someone who was, you know, quite keen to take risks would rail against something like regulation. So I guess it's, it's like, uh, like games of skill. It's about calculating that risk and what risks are worth taking do you think then and it's obviously very early days but do you think that regulation is an inevitability and therefore you're building with that future in mind so that when it happens you're in a very strong position because you've already jumped through a lot of those hurdles that other businesses who move into the space perhaps will have taken you know the easiest route to entry they'll have done the absolute minimum in terms of consumer protection yeah, there's you know two paths to take, right? You can take the uh, the right path, which is usually a little bit more costly. It's time intense, you know, or you can go the fast path. And I do not begrudge companies that said, you know what, we'll deal with that later on. You know, they will they will take the you know you know uh, ask for forgiveness later approach to business. Um, having worked with these companies, that's just not something that we really want to project, right? Um, you know, taking risks. Uh, isn't always about, you know, tossing, you know, risk aversion, you know, uh, to the wind or out the window. You know, we entered this space uh, very competently. As I just stated, you know, we did a ton of due diligence. Um, and this is why Apple, you know, when we, when we uh, submitted our app to them, they didn't bat an eye, right? You know, the, the risk that we take is really derived from tackling a new genre of gaming content instead of just building a Me Too product. 
um, to take, again, a well-known, well-loved game like Blackjack, a true casino game, right? And then make it truly skill-based and offering cash prizes in 36 U.S. states and other countries that are heavily regulated around games of chance. Um, there's been a huge risk financially as well as professionally. Um, and I like to think that so far we've come out relatively unscathed. Yeah, I mean, you certainly seem to be the numbers in terms of like where you're ranking in the app store and downloads are like, they're really phenomenal for such early days. And it'll be interesting to see how that continues to grow. And, and you know, it's certainly as you add other games into the portfolio, I think you'll only see, you know, extended growth as people who have found the platform move on to other games that you introduce. We've talked about the need for regulation, but certainly that it shouldn't be at the same level as gambling. How do you think regulation can most effectively be introduced in terms of these pure games of skill? Um, I think what you would need to agree is there would need to be some sort of threshold test. And then who do you think is the right body to regulate it? Because I personally would think it's it's not the same people that are regulating gambling because I think that's a very different threshold test that is met there and there might not be a right answer to this. Sure so what's nice is that the United States has a a, a long history of uh, gambling in casinos and most recently really starting to scale up uh, the iGaming and sportsbook space. So I do believe that there is clear framework uh, in how to regulate gaming uh, for cash prizes. Uh, but as you stated, you know, we really do need that threshold test. No different than how we uh, measure uh, and validate what is a lottery, a raffle, or a sweepstakes, right? Uh, if chance plays a major role, you know, if you're playing against a machine, if the playing field is not balanced for the player or players, then it's chance, right? It deserves to be regulated by normal games of chance rules. If the answer is, Yes, the playing field is balanced. You know, we need support and regulation um, that really looks like a, I don't want to frame this here. We need support and regulation that can take into account those differences uh, and offer new tools uh, and for regulation to be entered into the market. Um, you know, tools and services like blockchain, as an example. I'm actually here in Sudan right now preaching the gospel that is uh, uh, Bitcoin, SV, blockchain, and all the benefits of transparency and things of that nature. Um, this is a real opportunity to, you know, separate uh, skill gaming and skill gambling from uh, real uh, games of, of chance and, and that level of regulation. And by using us really as a sandbox, if you will, to show how these additional tools and services work um, and will make regulators' lives so much easier, they can then use that as a springboard into iGaming. And next thing you know, the suppliers and operators um, are, are integrating these types of services and being much more uh, streamlined in their approach to uh, servicing their, their partners, their supply chain, and the consumer. So your main market just now is in the US. When do you see or do you anticipate regulation moving into this space? I think it's coming sooner rather than later. Uh, I have it on high authority um, that there could be a handful of states that are actively looking at this right now. Um, and I don't think it can come soon enough. Again, I've uh, when I say that we've done our due diligence, it's not that we uh, did our due diligence and then stopped looking at the rest of the market. We're seeing more players enter this space. And again, the the you know just just tell us what your age is. You know that's that's totally fine. You know or, or you know we'll we'll find out where you are by IP instead of doing you know true um, global positioning lookups. Um, this space is going to continue to get flooded. Skills just did their IPO, so everybody wants to be the next Skills. And you know, God bless them if they want to do that. Um, but you know, Skills has their own problems. They have concerns of cheating, um, which has plagued their 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 company for a long time. Um, and that's one of those things where you look at blockchain technology, validating your users, validating fair gameplay. Um, you don't get players suing you when they can validate what truly transpired. Um, if your only response is, well, trust me, like that's problematic. That's that's always going to come back to bite you uh, on the backside. And that's, that's where we're hoping that through regulation, we can function as, um, again, a, a sandbox for better tools and services uh, to support um, an industry where we are trying to have true, true competitive uh, uh, gaming, right? 
uh, no different than um, you know CS:GO or any of these AAA type games. You know, this is one player playing against another, or one team playing against another, and we're not sitting always right across from each other. I can't see you, you know, shoot me from a hundred yards out. Um, you know, I just have to trust that somebody was there and, you know, they actually did that. And I think that's one of the the things about regulation is often it, from a consumer point of view, it's there in the background. As a consumer, you very rarely think about the regulation around really anything you do in your day-to-day life, but it gives you that security that you you believe that somebody is overseeing that and you feel like that when you put your money into that account, whether it's play this skill gaming, that there is an authority that you can go to if you believe that things are like are not as they should be, if your money isn't safe, if there's cheating, if the rules aren't being followed. And I think that's also really important from a consumer point of view and for you developing these games to enable you actually to grow into the market because that security really builds consumer confidence so i think we are both agreed that regulation is inevitable you have it on very good authority that it's coming faster than perhaps some others in the market might anticipate and it'll be really interesting to see how that happens and i think it would be great if um certainly if we see that happen in the next sort of six to 12 months and we see that some of the states start to introduce that, it would be great to come back and have another conversation with you once we see what the proposals are and to see where whole games sets against that and actually to see if, if you've already passed like many of those tests will set up or you know there's a further step you have to go. But I would love to have another conversation with you about it when we get to that stage. Yeah, and I'd love to take the Pepsi challenge. Uh, that's one thing that we've always uh, said to uh, naysayers is, you know, please, you know, put us put us up against, you know, our, our, our checks and balances, um, our compliance tools, uh, competitive analysis to make sure that, you know, players aren't, uh, uh, you know, colluding together to gain leaderboards, right, in order to win larger cash prizes. Like, we've built these things inherently into our platform, and uh, our partners who decide to work with us and are working with us are going to reap the benefits of that. They'll be able to skate into these markets as opposed to uh, scrambling to rebuild your infrastructure from the ground up because you took the, eh, we'll just wait and see what they do, you know, approach. You know, it's, it's, uh, I, I just, I think it's always the better route to, to, to be smart about it out the gate and uh, do things the right way. Yeah, I mean, I think we're seeing that more and more just generally that um, in business, it's, it's good it's good and very possible to do things the right way because that's what you should do. And there's such an increasing interest in the B Corp companies now, which is just like so interesting. And actually, maybe that's something to talk about another day because I think it's really interesting in the games and gambling space. But obviously, you know, we have people who are alcohol brands and all sorts of companies who are B Corps now. So there's no reason to say that we we also can't be. But I think it would be lovely to, you know, for you to be in a position whereby perhaps you're actually held up by whoever the regulator is as an example of how things should be done. So let's see if that's where we get to. So I will wish you the best of luck with the rest of your time in Sudan. And thank you so much for joining me. It's been really interesting. Thank you, Shona. I appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Cheers.